Welcome back guys, Mark here, and we're going to go ahead and start Lesson 12 off by letting you guys know we're going to build a framework for all of our games for the future. So I've been thinking about this for a while and I've been kind of like planning out this lesson and we've kind of done quite a few different things already between Lesson 1 and 11. Kind of taught you some of the beginnings, shown you some different things. Hopefully you guys are playing around with a lot of the code that I've shared. And hopefully you're actually using the help file that comes with Liberty Basic to go ahead and, and do some of the other things, um, like do some of the research on the other things and how they work. Um, the help file is, you know, very interesting, helps with a lot of different things. So today I really wanted us to go ahead and start setting up a framework. And by setting up this framework, we're going to use a lot of stuff we've already, already used. We're actually going to use that simple GUI window from lesson three. So we're going to start with that, but we're going to modify the code so that we're going to use the timer so we can control our game loop. And I'll explain the timer. It's something we haven't used yet. I haven't talked about it yet, but basically the timer will fire for whatever time we set on it, which will actually update our game loop and call a bunch of different functions or methods. Um, depending on what language you're using, subroutines. And so let's go ahead and, and get started here. So here we're hiding the main window. We know we're doing that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this down. And we're going to put a branch label here. And this branch label is going to be called start. So this is where our program is going to start. We're then going to go ahead and actually use another branch label to separate out our window. So we'll go ahead and we'll call this um, gaming world dot window, lowercase i here. And what we need to do is change our weight to a return. And you guys will see why as we go along here. So return, there we go. So the reason why we're actually changing it to a return is because we're actually gonna call this as a subroutine as we go down through and execute our code. So let's go ahead and set up our subroutines. We'll set up our variables. So, and I'll explain this as we go along. So we've got our new start, which is going to hide the main window. And then basically after we hide the main window, we're actually going to call go sub. And this is going to be our main window. So gaming, not two eyes, one eye there, gaming world dot window. So that's going to call our main window. This is actually going to fall through to another branch label. We're not going to put a way or anything right there. And this is going to fall into start dot gaming world. I right, spell it right, of course. And this will have a weight. So this will wait right there. So as we come down through, we're going to start out. This is going to call our window. And then we're actually going to return. And then we're going to go into gaming world dot window. So it's just going to fall right through. So if we were to run this right now, let me change scenes here. And I'll go ahead and run it. You can see we have our window. Up in the left it says gaming world. I've got it zoomed in here. But that's actually our actually main window. So it opens and stays. So let's go back. And we need to actually add quite a few more things here. So when we go into our, our gaming world, we're actually going to set the timer to zero. That's not what I wanted. We want tab. So timer zero. You can only have one timer. So you can't have multiple timers running. You can just have one. And basically when this timer fires, it's going to go ahead and execute a loop. So what we're going to need to do is up where our main window is. We want to go ahead and initialize 
our game variables. And one of the game variables we're going to have is game game speed. And let's set that to 60. We're actually going to use this in our start.gaming world. So we already have our timer. So what we want to do is actually set focus to the gaming world window, set focus. And then we want to take timer. We want to pass in the game speed. So that's how long our timer is. So basically we clear the timer, making sure it's set to its default. And then we're going to say timer game speed. So every 60 milliseconds, basically we're going to fire our timer. So it's less than a 10th of a second. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire this loop right here which is going to be gaming world dot loop. So that's what we're going to fire. Now we don't have that loop yet. So let's add that loop in. So gaming world dot loop. This will have a weight. And here we'll jump over. And when we get to our loop, we're actually going to call a bunch of subroutines. So um, we've talked about checking the keyboard. So what I want to do is actually check virtual keys. So I want to see if escape is pressed. So we're going to use go sub. And we're going to call this check virtual keys uh, we're going to go to that branch label so we're looking for virtual keys so what we need to do then is actually go ahead and add some code for our virtual keys so i'm actually going to add a section for functions at the bottom here or at the end of our file So we'll go across here like that, just because it breaks it up nicely. So basically we're looking here, we'll call it functions, functions section. And then I'll just copy the main part here and paste it. Boom, there we go. So check virtual keys, we're going to call that subroutine. So we're going to have a section for functions here. So when we actually go to check the virtual keys, let's go ahead and recycle this. Select that. We'll add this here. And let's call this check virtual keys there we go looks nice and then we're gonna actually add our branch label so check virtual dot keys and basically we're gonna say if get key which will be our function we're gonna actually lay out our function here and we're looking for the virtual key or escape so this is kind of a Windows function just so you guys know and 32769 which is defined so basically the value 3276 excuse me the value 32769 means that the key is down at the time of the check the value 32768 means that the key was pressed before we check so we want to make sure the key is, is actually pressed when we check it. So that's what 32,769 means, excuse me. So we're going to have this if statement. And then basically we're going to say that the player wants to quit. So we're going to go to 
gaming world dot quit. And then we're going to say end if and then return. So that's our subroutine for checking the keys. So we actually need our function to support this. So let's go add our function. And I looked how to say, how do we make this better, lay it out better. So just follow, follow me along for the car ride and we'll, we'll get it going here. So key, and we're passing in key. So this is our call to the function. Then we're gonna call a DLL. And we're actually calling user 32. And I talked about these in a previous lesson, what they allow us to do. And in the DLL, we're looking for this function, get async key state. So we're getting the state of a key here. The underscore is very important. And then we're key as long. And then we're going to return get key as long. And then we're going to end our function. So there we go. That's how we're going to get if we press the escape key. Um, if we were to play this now, it would actually run, but we'd probably get an error because we didn't change our gaming world dot quit yet. So let's go do that real quick. Um, so let's scroll up. And let's let's go ahead and add some some niceties in here. So labeling, I've told you guys it's very important to me. Helps for clarity later on. So let's do some quick housekeeping on labeling. So here, let's go ahead and bring this open here. And then we're going to say open our main window for our game. There we go. So that tells us, okay, that's our main window. So we've already checked in virtual keys. So let's go ahead and change our Gaming world quit. Let's go ahead and bring this branch label over here like this. Do some cleaning up just so it looks a little nicer. And let's add a label to this as well. We'll paste that in there. And basically, we'll, we'll basically label this um, quit the game. Ask yes, no. There we go, perfect. So now let's go ahead and add some code to this. So if we're gonna quit the game because we're using the timer, we wanna go ahead and set it to zero. So let's set the timer to zero. And then we wanna make sure that the user wants to quit. So let's use confirm, which will open a window with a yes, no. And then we can have our message, are you Sure. I'm sorry about my phone there. Let me go ahead and turn it off. Kind of distracting. Are you sure you want to quit? Keep getting my fingers in the wrong spot while I'm working on this. Jeez. There we go. And so. We're looking for answer. That's our local string variable for yes or no. We're gonna just pass that in. So we're gonna say if answer equals yes, then this is where we're actually gonna close gaming world. So we can actually use what we have here. There we go, close gaming world. And then end underneath here because we're actually ending our program. Then we'll say end if. Get rid of this end here. We don't need it. 
else we're going to say timer. We'll just the space there. So timer, game speed, because we're going to resume. Because if we're not quitting, we're resuming our game. Gaming world uh, loop. And then we can say end. So basically it's going to actually skip past that. So if we go ahead and run this, let's go back to this window and I'm going to run it. Okay. So what do we get? We got to close check virtual keys. So it says I didn't find check virtual keys. So we kind of, we crashed our program. Let's go back here and I see the issue. So right here in our loop, I forgot the period for check dot virtual keys. So now if I go back, let's run it. Our window opens. So it looks pretty good. And if we press escape, it's asking if it's, we want to quit and I'll say yes. And I know you guys didn't see that. And what I need to do is just change this back to display capture, um, to make it just nicer for you guys. Uh, and leave it on display capture. So there's our gaming world. If we hit escape. You can see, yes, it's asking us if we want to quit. We hit yes. And we exit our game. So if we run it again, we hit escape and we say no. It's going to crash out. Why does it crash? So it's going back to gamingworld.lube. Let's look here. Let's see, why are we crashing out? If we press no, it should go back. And I'm trying to figure out why. Maybe it's the end command here. So let's debug this together. I hit escape. Oh no, I don't want to quit. There we go. It's because I said end. So it's seeing the end of our, our program. So if I hit yes, now there we go. So now I run that and hit escape. Oh no, I don't want to quit. Let's keep running. So it's because I had end in there instead of wait. And wait is just basically our safety. It's like, okay, we're going to wait and keep going. So that fixes that. So now it stays open. And I've told you guys before, we're going to keep all this stuff in there so we can go ahead and keep building on it. Kind of, I think it's fun. I think it's neat if you guys can see how I troubleshoot things and how bugs do creep into your code, no matter how well you try not to have them. Um, but it does happen. So let's go ahead and scroll back up here, which we already have. So let's, Let's see here. We got our, our start. We got our start gaming world. We got our loop. We're setting focus. We're checking virtual keys. I think we should go ahead and let's go ahead and add a status bar to our main window. And this is something I haven't shown you guys yet. So we're using a graphics window, which is nice. It's a nice little window. I'm going to keep a space in here for clarity, but let's go ahead and add a graphic box. So graphic box and basically in this graphics box, we're going to use the handle to our window gaming world. And actually we're going to say gaming world dot GBX for graphic box. And then we're actually going to place it at zero, zero. And then we're going to say, okay, it's going to be the width of our window. So window width and then we're going to say it's 20 pixels high. So well, that's our graphics box. So let's go ahead and run this. See, we've got this nice line up here. That's our graphic box. You guys can see we added it there. All right. So I'll try to remember switch between scenes here. So, all right. So we went back for clarity. 
So let's go ahead and set up the status bar now. We're going to do that right below our window here. So let's uh, add some nice text in here. So set up status bar. And we're going to use the handle of our window because that's where it is. So gaming world dot gbx. That's our graphic box. And we're going to disable the graphics box. Because we're going to pump messages to it. We're not going to actually have it be selectable. We're just going to pump some stuff to it. Let's set the font of the graphics box. And so font, we're going to call it Arial. Say bold. And we're going to say 916. Um, I would definitely look up some font settings. Um, so basically we're going bold and then we're, because we're pathing in, we're, yeah, but we're pathing in, we're passing in nine and 16. We're actually declaring how big it is. Instead of setting the font size or the point size, we're actually declaring that, okay, it's nine wide by 16 tall. So we're, we're changing it manually. Um, definitely check the help file for more advanced font descriptions and settings. So here, gaming world dot gbx, and basically we're gonna put the pen down so that we're gonna write onto our graphics box. We're gonna fill our graphics box with a black color. We're gonna say our text is the color white, and then we're gonna say back color black. So that's going to fill in our graphics box. So now if we go ahead and let's go back here, we'll save it. We'll run this. You can see that our graphics box is now black. So we're not pumping anything to it, but it's black. So let's go ahead and say, yeah, we want to quit. So now, now that we've declared our graphics box and we set the color, we actually want to go ahead and build our status bar. So let's go ahead and, and put that right below our virtual keys. And I'm going to copy and paste this. Like I said, I'm going to use this over and over again for clarity. And basically this is going to be update the status bar. So that's how we're going to update our status bar. Let me move my cursor. My brother has said that my cursor gets in the way sometimes. So I'll try to move it off to the side. So if we're going to update the status bar, we actually need to do something here. So we're actually going to have a branch label called update status dot bar. So we're going to update the status bar. This is going to be a subroutine, so it is going to return. And then let's go ahead and use a local variable UI, which is going to be a string variable. And we're going to pass in space. I know you guys haven't seen this yet, but this is a function built in. So whatever we pass into here, we're actually going to have a space that wide. So 20 spaces wide. And then we're going to print out level. Let's do that level. And we haven't made this variable yet, but we'll call it level, whatever that level is. And we're going to add that to the top and just hold on one second. We'll add it up there with our local variables, but let's finish adding this here. So gaming world dot GBX. So that's our graphics box. Let's place this text place. 10, 14, so X and Y, so X of 10, Y of 14. Say gaming world.gbx. And then we're going to use so the backslash, the upper or the straight up slash. And then basically we're going to say UI, so whatever our UI is. So this is going to update our graphics box. 
Right now it won't show any level because we haven't made level yet. So up where we're initializing a bunch of game variables, let's set our level to equal zero. Let me save this, we'll go ahead and we'll run it. And we don't see anything. So it's like, okay, why don't I see anything there, Mark? We did all this stuff. Well, because we're building a framework, we actually need to call this in our loop, our gaming world loop. So every time we fire the game speed, and we go through this loop, we want to update that box or that status bar. So let's go sub, and this is update status dot bar. That's what's nice about this loop. We can build a function and just call it from our loop every time to go ahead and update itself. We can look for virtual key presses. So every time this loop fires, we're looking for different things. So imagine you had a function and we're going to do this later on, but a function that actually draws something on the screen. Well, every time the game loop fires, we can go ahead and draw and move that, that animation. So basically that's why we want to build this framework. So now let's go ahead and run this. You can see level is equal to zero because we call it every update. Now I probably want level to equal one if we're starting out a game, you know, level one. And you can see it now says level one. And yes, we want to quit. There we go. So we've initialized that game, that game variable. Not too bad, right? Pretty cool. Well, what if we want some keyboard input? You know, not virtual key input, but actual input from the keyboard. And so we want to build that in. I think I talked about keyboard input um, in the previous tutorial, but we're actually going to add that in here. So, so we're looking for the A key, the W key, the S, the D key. We're looking for any of that. So gaming world. And then we're going to say when character input. And we're going to call this check dot key, not G, keyboard. Jeez. Glad I can type tonight. There we go. So keyboard. So every time that we press a key on the keyboard, we're actually going to call this check. And this is basically checked every time that loop fires as well. So it's always looking for keyboard input. And we're actually gonna build that right underneath our window. The reason why I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna, it's basically part of my window in my opinion here. So it's gonna stay close to where the quit and all that statement is. But we're going to change this. We're gonna document it very well. And we're gonna say check for keyboard character input because that's what we're looking for are we pressing a b c d and we're going to use that same method that we used before so let's go ahead and create our branch label so gaming oh this is a gaming world check dot keyboard there we go. And basically this is just going to wait because it's going to check the keyboard, do whatever it says, and then it's going to return. So let's go ahead and build in looking for presses. So I showed you guys this before. So we're saying if the length of the in key, so whatever key we pressed is equal to two, then the key actually equals an ASCII key character. So if you want to look up the ASCII key code, that's what we're doing here. And we're looking at the right most side of that character. We're passing an in key and we're looking for that first position, just one letter. Else the key equals zero. Then we're going to say character equals 
in key. So we're going to assign the in key to our character. And that'll work every time. So the other thing I would do is say in key. Let's reset it back to empty just to make sure. And all I want to do is look for if we press the A key, upper or lower case. So I'm going to say if character is equal to, and I could probably say lower I think I pass this in a string. I'm trying to remember. Lower A then. I haven't used that function in a while, so hopefully this works. Level equals level plus one. So before you guys saw where I said if the character equals A, lowercase a, or if the character equals upper it, case a, so no matter what we press on the keyboard, this will actually set it to its lower case and we don't have to build in all that extra code. Well, let's make sure I did it right. And I'm gonna save this, let's run it. And it's not happy. And let's see why, why isn't it happy? Well, it says there's a syntax error. So let's go in key equals to the ASCII right in key. That looks good, character. Ah, I know what I forgot, right here. Dirt, dirt, dirt. It's me being special. We need to actually set that. So now let's run it. It runs, if I press A, it works. So every time we press A, we're gonna actually increment the level. Just shows you guys how we can update that on the screen. So we're looking for character input. So that works very well, perfect. And I taught you guys how to use lower so we can reduce our code or refactor our code. We can make it more efficient. So that works very well. All right, so now we got our in key. We're updating our status bar. This is where you might say, okay, Mark, what's left? What do you got left up your sleeve? Well, let's go ahead and do some drawing. And let's look inside this folder here. And I've already created a sprite with an arrow. So you guys can see this. So you guys, I've talked to you about creating sprites. Um, if not, watch some of the previous videos. Um, I've talked about creating sprites before. And we're actually going to call sprites right underneath our main window. So we're actually gonna load our sprites from a method or a function, or a subroutine. Which basically, they're all the same thing. So we're gonna say go sub, and we're gonna call it load.sprites. So any sprites we need to load for our game, we're probably gonna call from this subroutine. And basically, where do we wanna put load, load sprites? Let's put it right above our virtual keys. So let's find our virtual keys. Let's see, right here, virtual keys. Let's copy this. Let's keep labeling. And so let's go ahead and remove this. We'll call this load sprites. Nice organized section. So it's a subroutine. So load dot sprites. Once it loads our sprites, we want to return. And then let's go ahead and load our sprites. So I only have one sprite, so it's going to be load BMP, and we're going to call it arrow, and then we're going to point to where our sprite is. So sprites backslash arrow dot BMP. So we're loading our arrow. So now let's add it to our game. Gaming world. Add sprite. We're just going to call it arrow. Arrow. Now we might have better names later on, but 
that's what we're going to use for it. So we're just adding an arrow. And so gaming world. Sprite XY because we want to tell it where it needs to be on our screen. Sprite XY. Arrow. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a few more variables. We're going to create arrow X. We've got to have the space in between. And then arrow Y. Then it's going to return. So what we need to do is actually go up back up above. Now that we have arrow X and arrow Y, and we need to add those to our variables here. Arrow X. And do we want that to be, yeah, because we want to set it on the screen. So we want to set our arrow X to be 25 by default. Might help if I do that and then that. And then our arrow Y will have that be 384. Perfect. That worked out perfect. So on the X and Y position, so X 25 over from the left and 30, 184 pixels down from the top. And so what we want to do now is we actually we'll run through. We're going to go through our gaming world, our gaming loop, update status bar. So this should go ahead and add our sprite. So let's save it. Let's run it and see. So we don't see our sprite. And you're probably going to say, Mark, what did you do? Well, I didn't do anything. I was waiting to see if you guys noticed. We need to always draw our sprites. And I know it's presumptuous of me that, you know, you guys would have noticed. But inside of our loop, we can actually add our draw sprites right here, which is nice because every time this fires, it's going to redraw all our sprites. So if we're doing some movement and some animation, this will just keep updating our sprites and drawing them to the screen. We don't have to call it 52 times. We call it from one spot. It's very, very nice with how this works. This is why I've been kind of excited to talk about this framework. Um, I'm going to try to do this video in about 45 minutes, but we'll see what happens. So now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see our arrows kind of way up at the top there. I can kind of see it right here. You see it kind of sticking down just a smidge. And yes, I want to quit. So we're at 25, 384. So let's go, just go down and look at our, our sprite here. So we're saying arrow X and arrow Y. Perfect. That's what we want. And that should be actually down a little bit farther on the screen. So I'm just trying to look to see why it's not at the moment. Um, let me see. So arrow X, arrow Y, arrow, arrow, add sprite, sprite, X, Y, arrow. Got all my spaces like I need. Let's see, let's run it again. So it's just so weird that it's it's up there. Let's see. Well, that's the X and Y position. That's right where it needs to be. Nothing's spelt wrong. Right X, Y, arrow. Not like I spelt, spelt arrow wrong or anything. Well, let's build our next function and then we'll go back and look at it. Because there's one more thing we need to do here. So we have everything we need except for draw arrow. Because I actually want to animate the arrow. And so to do that, and just follow along, we will fix that. To do that, we actually want to call that right here. So it goes sub. And then whenever we do this, it's going to call be called move dot arrow. So that's what we're looking for. So that's our subroutine that's in our loop. And when we look down, um, where do I want to do this? Let's do it right below the status bar right here. This is where we want to draw the arrow at. 
Control C, Control V, and we're gonna call this move sprite or move our arrow, move arrow sprite or animate arrow sprite, whatever we want to call it. Let's go ahead and have our branch label move dot arrow. Let's just build this. That's just going to return being a subroutine. And let's just go ahead and build this real quick. So basically, we're going to say if arrow x is greater than 24 and arrow x is less than 1024. So as long as it's on the screen, basically, then arrow x equals arrow x plus 10. So we want to move it 10 pixels as long as it's still on the screen. Say, and if, but we want to add a little code underneath here. This is actually going to be the handle to our window, gaming world. We're going to say sprite x, y, arrow. I should check that actually. I think I've might have figured out our other issue. Arrow x. Oops. Arrow y. That's the end if. So that's how we're actually going to move it on the screen. And then basically we're going to look. So if arrow x is greater than or equal to 1024. So if it's greater than 1024 pixels, it's basically going to be off the screen or close to being off the screen. Then arrow x is equal to 25. So let's reset the position of the arrow. So I'm going to save this and let's go back up and look here. Now we have the space there. So that's kind of funny. So sprite x, y, let's just go ahead and run it. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. So now it's fixed. So basically, probably when we're loading the sprite, when we're setting it, there's something there that we're not setting. And let's look here, sprite x, y, arrow, arrow. No, sprite x, y, arrow. Arrow X, arrow Y. So there probably should have been an update or a draw sprites probably because we weren't returning properly. But it does work now as you guys can see. It draws our arrow across the screen. Works the way we want. And it might be that I hadn't finished the code either. So I'd have to go back and look at it. Um, so if we were to go back that is all the code, but basically what I want to do is let's comment out all this code and let's go back and look at our arrow. And our arrow is way up there on the Y position, even though we set it to 384. So let's go ahead and debug this. And let's run this. Arrow Y equals 384. But our arrow is way up here. Which is really, really bizarre. So A works, we're setting the key. So let's go back and look. Let's look at this. So as it comes down through, we're loading our sprite, arrow X, arrow Y. We're adding it. When we return, load sprites. So basically the why it's not working is we actually don't have a draw sprites and I'll show you this is because we hadn't finished the loop yet so when we load the sprites it's just adding them so it's basically stuck in the default position as I'll call it so if I do this no it's still stuck way up there which is weird 
Arrow X, arrow Y. Draw sprites. Wow, that's bizarre. I'd like to get that thing to move down. Right X, Y. Draw sprites. I hate to leave the episode on a cliffhanger like this, but with all this code commented in, it works fine. You guys see that it works very well. Sprite X, Y, arrow, arrow X, arrow Y. So I'm just trying to figure out why. So arrow X, arrow Y. We see that, so if we go ahead and we debug this, We run everything. So our arrow X is 25. Our arrow Y is 384. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. But for whatever reason, it's actually not setting our sprite until later on. So, I mean, I guess, what do we do? Do we call, we move our our code around, do we try to like break it? Cause I know this actually works the way I need it to once we start drawing sprites. Um, we might just face this out another time. Let me just try this one thing. So we're loading sprites here. Let's go ahead and load sprites in our start gaming world. Save, run that, there we go. And I bet it's because it doesn't have the focus of the window. That's exactly what it is. So the set focus. So when we start gaming world, um, we can go ahead and load the sprites from within there and then set the position. And that is basically because we don't have the focus of the gaming world, as you guys can see right here. So we don't even actually have our variable set. Um, so I wonder if, and this is just a thought here. Follow me along, and it might not even be the set focus. It might be that the variables don't exist until we were getting past there. So I thought it was set focus, but I bet it's because arrow X and arrow Y get initialized afterwards. So if I run this now, and that's exactly what it was. There we go, I love pinpointing issues. So the real issue wasn't the set focus, it was that we were initializing our game variables after we were loading our sprites. So to fix the framework, let's go ahead and initialize our variables first and then load any of our sprites. And now we can comment all of this code back in. And like I said, I'm gonna take you guys on that troubleshooting journey, on that debugging code. Let's figure out the problem and think about it logically. And that runs. So you can see our arrow goes across the screen. It was right where we wanted it. It looks really good. If I hit the A key, it increases the level, updates the UI, and it never interrupts our arrow. So everything keeps playing. So we could roll our music into this, and we might have um, a function uh, of load music. You know, so we might actually build that into our game loop. So this is the base framework. Right here, what I've just finished, if you guys really want the source code, let me know, I'll send it to you. Um, I can email it to you, I post a link to it. But I hope you liked the video. If you do, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in the next lesson.